Excellent. Thank you. Um, so good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to, again, be uh, talking about how you can get started with um, making your own game portfolio and start getting some experience, even if you don't already have experience of your own. So just want to make sure everybody can see my screen, hopefully. Um, you know, you should see there's a, a presentation that I'm going to share. Um, if not, you know, just let me know. Yeah, okay, it looks like it's sharing. Um, so, excellent. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, like I said, um, I, I gave this talk yesterday. So if you are um, returning for the second day and you have um, any other questions for anything that I didn't address yesterday, you know, just please go ahead and, and let me know. Let me introduce myself a little bit. Um, you know, like you heard, I am the owner of Cloudy Heaven Games, oh, my own little game development studio here. And about my background, I do have education and professional experience in computer science and, and game development. So, you know, I, I went to school and, and got a degree in computer science, um, and I worked for uh, a large software or, or technology company uh, for a while as a software uh, developer. So I have that background. I know that there's always a question of whether or not you need to go to school and get a degree to get into game development. So, you know, if you want me to talk more about that later, uh, please let me know and I can elaborate. And I think like many of you here, I've, I, I grew up with a, a lifelong passion for games. So, you know, I'm probably dating myself quite a bit here, but I really got started back in the mid to late eighties playing on my cousin's Atari and Vectrex and original NES Nintendo system um, before I even made it to preschool. So uh, from there, I pretty much have been gaming and, and been interested in, in doing games uh, since then. So I think that's something that a lot of you will probably be able to relate to. Okay, so that's enough about me. Uh, what I really want to talk about is uh, what will help you guys, okay? So when we're talking about how do I get started with game development, I usually like to break this down into three basic steps. And like I, uh, I've said before, I know that you know, this seems a little bit easier said than done, you know, three steps and you're there, right? But we're going to go into more detail about these today and hopefully give you a better idea of what these steps actually entail. So let's start with, with um, step one, which is learning about the game industry. And what do we mean by that? So really, the what I'm talking about when I'm, I'm saying to start learning about the game industry is really start learning about the, the different roles you can play as a game developer, all right? So yeah. I think that a lot of times when people hear about someone who's a game developer, they think of these three, the, these first three categories here, a uh, game designer, which is someone who really develops the ideas and concepts and, and layouts for a game, right? And the overall player experience. So if you ever have had a, an idea for a game, um, that you want to make, or you've thought about, well, what makes this game work? What's good about it? What's, you know, not so great about it? That's the the game designer role. And I think that a lot of cases, you might have already put on this hat here and not necessarily known what that was called, okay? So that's the first one. Uh, the next one is the programmer. And again, I think this is something that most people think about when they're, when they're uh, thinking about making games. They're like, I have to learn how to code, right? So this is a very technical role and it really is the uh, cr critical role because if you don't have someone who is a programmer or you know some sort of software at some point, then you don't really have a video game, right? You can still make games, but just not video games. So that's another common role that comes to mind. And then Another one that I hear a lot is artists. So the, you know, the, the visual art assets for the game. And a lot of times, even when you're looking for um, for schools for game development, a lot of times they will have like the game artist degree, okay? But there's a lot more beyond those three. So let's talk about some of the other things you could do to get involved with game development. So there's re musician and sound artist. Now I think the musician part, a lot of people are like, okay, that makes sense because most games have some sort of music, right? So that's not a big surprise, but what a lot of people don't necessarily think about is sound effects. 
So that's a, a pretty important job and role too. So you can get in, involved in game development that way. Another thing is voice actor. So if you are interested in games that provide some sort of dialogue or you know character dialogue or narration or anything like that, then there is also voice acting as a possible role here. And of course, not all games have that, but it, it is a, a significant role that you can look for in game development. Okay. So some more of the less obvious roles, of course, um, the writer. So whoever's writing the game story, and that can in include the script or dialogue as well as, as like the background of the game world and, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Um, not necessarily things that are always in the game itself, but think about how, um, I don't know if people really still use strategy guides or, or like the instruction booklets that used to come with games, but, you know, a lot of times those have, have um, important background to the, to the game story that a, a writer needs to put together, right? So that's something else you can consider as a possible role. Now this next one, um, playability and quality, uh, quality assurance tester, uh, play tests the game for bugs, uh, problems in game quality, whether or not the game is actually playable and fun, and other issues. Now this is a role that a lot of times you will see if you want to break into a particular game studio. The, they might have these these uh, jobs open as sort of like the the ground level, entry level sort of of jobs that you can do. So so that's something that again I don't know if a lot of people think about that, but it's also a really good good opportunity if you want to get started with a particular game studio. Okay, um, project manager. So as with any project, particularly software projects, which of course video games are. It, it takes a lot to keep those things moving smoothly, right? So there, if you're a project manager, you're going to be responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of the team. So you're going to really have to be someone who can help keep, thing, keep things organized, right? You're going to be coordinating team members. And you might even be making sure that the game project stays on track as far as some of the business perspectives like time and, and budget and other resources that are involved in, in putting together a, a software project or a game development project. So project manager is very important. Um, you know, if you are, if you want to do a solo development for a game that you, an idea that you have, then you'll probably be, be incorporating a lot of this um, on your own um, as the de facto project manager. Okay. And then the next one, very important, marketer or promoter. So from my experience, I'm more on the design and programming side, okay? Um, and I'm very much an introvert. So when I, when I have people, when I want people to know about my game, I have to somehow get the word out there. So I found that, you know, promoting and being able to gain publicity for your game is a very important skill. And this can include things like going on to social media and connecting with people, maybe uh, contacting people that you know, or, you know, putting together, putting together events, maybe like a play testing event or party where, or a release party where everybody gets together and plays your game or something like that. So if you are, are really that social kind of person who's good at getting people involved and excited about things, then maybe marketer or promoter is something that you can do. Okay. And then the last one that I have here, the technical writer. So, uh, you know, th this is a little bit different from the writer description that I, I, I mentioned before, because um, this is more on the, <clears throat> for instance, like the, the software side of it. So writing software um, design documents or writing the, um, the, the technical documents for end users, like how do I install this game and how do I run it on my computer or whatever the case may be. So, you know, the, the more technical side, being able to take complicated technical concepts and, and, and um, processes and break them down so that a variety of people can understand them, okay? <clears throat> so that's what we're talking about when we're talking about different game development roles, okay? And I think that there's probably a lot that I might not have mentioned. Uh, you know, you can probably think of like producer and director and translator, but I think this is a pretty good overall skill set um, to, to start thinking about. All right. So the next part is once you have an idea of 
what sort of role you want to play and or what you want to do as part of game development, you need to start thinking about what do you need to do to prepare yourself for that role, okay? So depending on, on the what you want to do, there's different types of preparation and education, but there's some guidelines that I have for everybody on the team, okay? And, and that includes the game design. So uh, there's lots of educational resources out there about the basics of game design. So now we are obviously in the middle of this great um, conference that we're all attending right now. And if you look at a lot of the sessions that are presented, there's a lot of game design uh, sessions that are out there, talks that you can go to, to really start learning about that. So, you know, I definitely recommend that. Um, check out any, you know, check out some books online, um, tutorials, things like that. Um, so that's really something that I recommend for everybody. Now, humanities courses. So this is a large umbrella here. So that includes things like history, literature, writing, mythology, etc. things like that. Now, we know that with a lot of stories out there in the media, um, even if you look at some of the big movies out there, like the Marvel Universe, you know, that, that obviously includes comics and books and video games and TV shows, a lot of that draws from mythology. So, you know, Loki and Thor, that's Norse mythology, right? You can also think of other games, um, you know, like God of War and things like that, that borrow from Greek mythology. Or um, I think, uh, what is that game? Ghosts of Tsushima borrows a lot from Japanese history, right? So a lot of times you will see that when you're coming up with game stories or uh, or world backgrounds uh, for your game world, you'll draw a lot from these humanities uh, disciplines, okay? And I think sort of related to that humanities is also writing and communication. Um, you can have a lot of great ideas as far as, you know, being a, a technical person. You could be a great software developer or, or, or game programmer. You could be, you could have a, a great I, set of ideas for your game designs, but if you can't communicate them, through uh, not just writing, but also, you know, speaking and things like that, then you're going to have a really hard time working in a team, <clears throat> even getting people to join your team or to play your game or to maybe invest in your game if you need financial backing for it. So writing and communication are critical uh, for everybody. All right. Now, this next one that I recommend, not everybody's necessarily going to want to hear this, but it's important basic math skills, okay? So you probably at some point or another as a student, I don't know if you're still a student or, or not, but you might've thought, well, why do I have to learn all this math in school? I don't have to, I'm not gonna have to use it once I graduate, right? So I am here to tell you that you know, if you wanna get involved with games, uh, math is gonna be very important. And obviously I'm a, a programmer, so I do have to use a lot of math um, with basic things as such as getting objects to move or bounce on the screen, right? And uh, but it also goes beyond that. Think about if you're a project manager, for instance, uh, you're going to need some math skills to be able to to keep track of budgets and, and scheduling and you know uh, things like that. And you know, art. There's math involved in the proportions of drawing and creating scenery and objects, right? So so basic math skills, I think, are very important for everybody. Now, if we're talking about more specific roles, of course, uh, programmers, you know, you want to learn computer science, programming languages, basic physics, and at least some algebra, okay? So you're going to get more into uh, more advanced math, all right? Um, if you're an artist, you want to think about things like user interface design, which again, I think that's one of those sort of hidden skills that's very important in game development, but that people don't necessarily think about. So think about that. Some basic drawing classes, not necessarily digital, but even paper and pencil, and 2D and 3D specific digital art skills. And that might include any software that you want to use, uh, maybe Photoshop or Illustrator or Blender or Maya, whatever the case may be. And a little bit of basic scripting. So a little bit of programming because some of the software that you use um, as an artist can uh, the workflow can benefit from having some basic scripting skills, okay? So if you are someone who is wondering about or, or thinking about going to school for this, 
um, there, there's a link here. Um, I will put it in chat, and I'm going to give I'm going to give a link to this presentation as well, so you'll be able to come back to this slide and and look at this. There's a, a list of some of the best video game design skills uh, schools, rather. Um, so you know you can start thinking about um, what school you might want to attend if you're interested in going that route. Okay. Um, also, if you want to get more education, you can attend local game dev events to learn more about the industry in general. And again, you're, you're taking the first step here by being at this uh, East Coast Games Conference. So I, I really encourage you to take advantage of that and look for other things. Um, you know, I, I know in a lot of cases we're still doing virtual, uh, not necessarily in person, but look at, at things like the International Game Developers Association or IGDA. OK, uh, a lot of times they'll have local events or look at local meetups. So uh, really look for, for things in your area or virtually uh, that you can do and opportunities to learn more. OK. OK. And um, like I said, I, I, if you have more specific questions, um, these are just some of the, the, the more popular roles. But, you know, always feel free to uh, reach out to me um, during question and answer time or even afterwards. And, and I can help you with more specific um, skills or preparation. Okay. All right. So you know now what role you want to play. You have an idea of what the skills you need are. And now we're going to talk about step three here, which is actually starting to make games and portfolios. So again, you know, I, I say that and it sounds really simple, but you're, you, you might not be sure how to go about doing that. So here's what I recommend to get started. So first of all, you want to think about where you're going to, how you're going to put together a portfolio and how you're, where, how and where you're going to present it. Okay. So if you're interested in, in like the art and music side of things, you might have be in a situation where you already have been developing those skills, but you just haven't necessarily applied them to um, gaming yet. Okay. So what I would suggest you do is I would say maybe start putting together a portfolio of the art and or music and sound that you might already have and uh, start presenting it or putting it somewhere that people can see it out in uh, like the public, the, the general Internet public or whatever the case may be. OK, so if you have a personal website, you know, some of you guys might. That's a good place that you can uh, that you can use. Uh, for your portfolio. And if you want a personal website, you know, look into things like WordPress, you know, really easy to get like a free um, a website set up without having to do a lot of programming. So that option is out there. YouTube, um, you know, if you're, you might think of, of this when you're, if you're doing music, but if you have an art portfolio, like even, like I said, even if it's something like concept art, which doesn't necessarily make it into the game itself, but it provides an idea of like the the game world or the characters or you know what the the look and feel is there you can put together maybe a, a slideshow of your art and put that on YouTube okay that also might be good if you're good at doing some sort of cin cinematography or or cut scenes or things like that so you know look at, at look at YouTube uh, if you are so just if you are also a programmer or have started doing some sort of game development. If you want to, you can also do a quick trailer for your games or, or work that you can put on YouTube as well. And SoundCloud. So, you know, if you are someone who is who is on the sound side of things, uh, be that music or sound effects or maybe even um, voice acting, you can put start putting together a SoundCloud for that. OK, so now now programmers, I, I feel like a lot of times uh, if you're interested in programming, you're coming to a lot of uh, people are coming to it with no programming experience. So, you know, it, it seems like it might be a little bit more uh, daunting for people to break into programming, but here's how you can do that. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to figure out what programming language or game engine you want to use. And I'll talk more about that in the next slide. Um, and then once you have that, you want to start making your own demo games, okay? And you're going to start by doing the tutorials that are available in your language or your game engine, okay? Once you've done a, a few tutorials, start making some tweaks or changes to the tutorials, you know, to, to, to really experiment and apply what you've learned. Um, and then you can start also 
once you've done several tutorials, see if you can take those skills that you've learned and put them together into a small project, okay? So you're really starting, and this keyword here, starting small, right? Um, and, and gradually building up your skill set into bigger and more complicated games, a step at a time. All right. So let me give you a more concrete example of how you're going to do something like that. Let's say that maybe you're starting out with a tutorial about how to um, how to work with text, you know, drawing out text on the screen, uh, manipulating text behind the scenes or whatever you need to do. So now how can you apply that to making a demo game? So you can start thinking, OK, I know how to work with text now. So how can I uh, how can I pr pr uh, present information to my player uh, using text. So, you know, maybe a text-based tutorial or something like that, or maybe uh, figuring out how to draw uh, maybe text, little text clues on the screen or little pop-ups or something like that, okay? Maybe you want to do a story-based game. So maybe you can start looking at how to use your newfound text skills to do uh, some sort of narrative in your game. So maybe dialogues or, you know, things like that or text boxes, or maybe you even want to do a text-based game. So, you know, that's just one example of how you can start applying a particular skill. Maybe you, you've you done like an audio tutorial. So how can you start adding little sound effects to your game to make it I, what they call, um, I guess, uh, what they call juiciness or to make the game pop more or to get the the player more emotionally invested? How can you start using those skills to um, build a more steadily uh, build more complicated projects? Okay. Um, if you already have a game idea, you know, and I'll talk more about this in a little bit, if you want, uh, start thinking about what it takes to make that game idea. You know, what are the individual components that will go into making that game idea? And, then start mapping the skills you learn in tutorials to the game idea that you want to make. Okay, so then you'll start filling in that framework and, and get a better idea of what it really takes to build this dream game that you have. All right. Uh, so so that's you know what what you want to get started with with um, working with tutorials as a programmer. Okay. So in general, so I you know I mentioned a lot of the game roles that um, that you can do. And some of them you can really start, you can put together games on your own. So like if you're a programmer, uh, you can, you can, um, even if you need to, you can go find art that's already done or, um, you know, maybe make your own basic art or maybe just do like a, a game that doesn't rely a lot on art or, and sound. And you can really make a, a game on your own. I've seen also a lot of artists and musicians they learn a little bit of basic programming or they pick up some of the game engines that I'm going to tell you about next and they're able to put together a game right on their own. Now, some of the roles that I mentioned, like project manager or promoting, you kind of have to have other people um, to, to, to make the game that you're going to be working with. Right. So you might need to find a team uh, to work on or, you know, even if you're a programmer or an artist or musician, um, you still might want to put together a team because, um, you know, you, you don't want to do all of the other skills on your own. So, okay. So um, if you're going to want to find a, a team to help you make games for your portfolio and you could do that, one of the first suggestions I have is to go on forums like TIG source, the independent game source or gamedev.net or other forums that are out there, particularly for indie game developers. And a lot of times they'll have like a help wanted section of the forum, okay? So that might be something where you say, look, um, I'm looking for a game team. I wanna join a team. Here's the skills that I have, you know, hire me or, um, you know, let me join your team for free or whatever the case may be, okay? So that's one angle. Another angle is, okay, maybe I have a game idea that I'm, that I'm working on. <clears throat> And I need people to help me with it. So I need an artist or I need a project manager or I need a programmer. And that's really where this communication part is going to come into to play because you're going to need to be able to communicate your skills or what you can do or, um, you know, what your game idea is. So people have an idea of what they're going to be um, working on. Right. And this is where also where you can really start sharing this portfolio that you um, have, have hopefully started putting together. Okay. Um, 
if you're in school, you can look at your look around um, among your classmates to see if there are like-minded people who you can collaborate with, or maybe see if there's a game development club at your school, or maybe even start one. You know, also think about if there if there's a computer science club, then you know maybe one of the things you could do is, is do like a game project because that is part of computer science. So think about what's around you if you are in school. Okay, and lastly, the other thing that I'm going to mention here is again local and virtual game dev events. So. Like we said, you're here at ECGC, you're in this Discord server, and you've probably noticed that there are some really nice um, little uh, Discord rooms and chats that are specifically geared towards networking and job postings and, you know, getting your, your portfolio um, evaluated and, and things like that, right? So you already have access to people who can possibly help you uh, really get started on this journey of putting together a team. Okay. So, um, you know, this is, you know, the, my guidance for really starting to put together a portfolio for yourself. Okay. Now uh, I mentioned the tools that you want to use. So I'm going to talk about game engine. So what is a game engine? A game engine is a piece of software that helps developers make games. So it takes a lot of, of the work um, out of the, the process. And I, you know, not that it's going to do everything for you, but think about, you know, if you are uh, learning a programming language and you're thinking, okay, well, do I have to build everything from scratch? You know, do I have to, do I really have to, to build the whole game from the ground up in this programming language that I'm doing? Okay, so that's where game engines come into play. So they can do things like they can help you um, in, in some cases, maybe create le different levels, edit different levels. Um, they'll load the screens for you and help you go from one screen to the next. Uh, they might have functionality built in to help you deal with sound and music and things like that. Maybe they have some networking features that help you to do multiplayer. All sorts of good stuff that if you were to do that on your own um, from scratch, you would probably have a much... Um, uh, more difficult and time consuming uh, experience. Okay. So some game en engines that I'm going to recommend here. Uh, the first category is game engines that are good for people without a programming background because they have a, a really good visual interfaces and like drag and drop and things like that. Okay. So the first one that I've used a lot myself is Game Maker Studio. Okay. So even as an experienced developer, um, I put together my first game in Game Maker Studio because having the engine really saved me a lot of time and, and helped me focus on like the game design parts. Okay. Now game maker studio also has like a, a scripting language that you can use um, to, to add more complicated features, but it can help you get started. Even if you don't have a coding background now game salad, I've heard a lot of good things about that stencil. That's another one. I believe that's more like HTML based. And um, <clears throat> so if you want to do web browser games, um, you know, that you can think about that. There's also, I think, uh, some that I don't have listed here, but like Phaser, that's another good one that um, that is good for web-based uh, web games, browser-based games. I have a, a high school student who taught himself JavaScript um, through Code Academy, and then after that, he started making games in Phaser. So, you know, even if you're a student and you're starting from, from the beginning with programming, you know, you can do something like that. Another good one that I'm going to recommend is called Scratch. Okay, it's at scratch.mit.edu. And it, it, it might seem, I, I think in a lot of cases, it, it is geared towards younger learners. But don't let that stop you because it actually has a lot of really good tutorials that introduce you to the, the basic programming and computer science concepts and the game design concepts. So, you know, if you, maybe you're older, or, you know, you feel like you don't want to, to um, you know, get too much into the kitty stuff. If if you even if you don't show anybody else the games, you know, just go to Scratch and you know start playing around it with some of the tutorials, and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at how much you can really learn from it. Okay. Now, if you are someone who's coming to this with more experience in programming, or you know, you're comfortable with with uh, learning some new languages, or or maybe there are some languages that you're already comfortable with here. So some options for you. So Unity, 
that's a really popular one. And what I like about Unity is that it's really, it has a lot of good community support. So lots of tutorials that are out there, um, forums, all sorts of, of good stuff that comes with Unity. So that if you are someone who is who has um, worked with C Sharp or comfortable with C Sharp, then uh, Unity is something good for you. Okay, uh, even if you're you're um, comfortable with a language like Java or C plus plus, C Sharp isn't really that bad to pick up. You know, I have a student that I'm working with who um, started out with Java, then we taught him some C Sharp, and now I'm I'm helping him learn Unity. Okay. Um, if you are more on the Java side, you know, you can look at JMonkey Game Engine. Uh, that's, I, I believe it's open source. It's definitely free. And I think it also does 3D as well as 2D. So that's something that you might want to look into. I don't know that it's really popular, but, you know, in a lot of cases, um, it, as long as it's something that you can create a game in and share with, you know, that that's still good to get started with, okay? And now a uh, mono game, I have that on here. It's not an engine as much as it is a framework. And, you know, I won't go too much into the differences between a framework and an engine. Well, a framework really um, is, is less hands on, um, you know, it does less for you than a game engine does. You still have to do a lot of the work, but, you know, um, mono game is something that is based on C sharp. It, it's based on the old um, X and A framework that Microsoft had for indie developers who were working with um, Xbox, right? So I, uh, you know, like I said, I, I, there's a game that I'm working on that I started with um, doing it in Game Maker Studio, but in order to add more functionality and features to it, I'm porting it over to mono game um, in, in C sharp. Okay. So those are some game engines that you can think about. Um, if you are interested in uh, doing like that programming, or even if you aren't a programmer and not really comfortable with coding, but you at least want to start making a game, you know, you can go with some of these good for beginners um, tools or like that scratch.mit.edu that I mentioned. Okay. Um, so um, the, so there's a couple of other slides here that I like, what's a typical day? Like, I'm not going to go into the details of that um, unless you really want me to. Um, but here's, if you want more info, um, here's some links. And like I said, I'm going to give you a link to this presentation. Um, so you'll have this. But, um, you know, there, this, this first one here, there's a, an in-progress Google document that I have that I'm, you know, continuing to add to. And it goes into more detail about some of the stuff that I've talked to. So um, I'll give you the link for that. And we'll look at that together in a second. Um, you know, here's my email. Um, if you want to see some of the projects that I've done, um, there's my itch.io page. Um, itch.io is... Um, a good place for indie developers and content creators to um, show uh, and share and maybe even sell their games. So I have some things there. I have some um, uh, it, some game demos um, that I, I was looking for feedback on. And the main one that I'm, I'm working on is called Brain Bouncer. That's the one that people really like. So I'm building that out. So you can play that there if you want. Um, and then um, if you want, you can follow me on my Twitter. I'm not as active on Twitter, but, you know, I, I think if you want to contact me, email is probably the best, but, you know, um, doesn't hurt to, to check out Twitter as well. Okay. So, um, you know, in a second here, I'm going to go, I'm going to open this up to questions, but I want to share a couple of things with you. Um, this document that I was telling you about, um, this in progress document, um, you know, there's an, other ways to contact me here. So again, you'll have my email address and there's also an anonymous survey or comment form. So if you have questions or you want to give feedback or, or there's something you'd like me to talk more about or put into this document, uh, you can contact me anonymously through survey monkey. Now, you know, if you won't, uh, if you don't want to share your email address, then you'll have to keep an eye out on this document or like my Twitter or whatever um, to, to get the answer to your question. But, you know, I know sometimes people don't want to share their email. So in this document, I also go into more detail about some of the preparation you could do for some of the roles that we talked about. I've got game designer and programmer and artist up there, and I still need to go through and, and add some of the other stuff. Um, so, you know, we've got that to be continued. So uh, with the programmer, um, you know, I do want to point out that I also go into more detail about specific languages that you can pick up. Um, you know, so you can take a look at that um, for, for all of the roles that I've, I've outlined so far, um, you know, I, I've gone into more detail about some of the different duties and tasks and, and different um, specialized roles you can do within uh, the, the, the main role. Okay, so you've got that. Uh, the other thing that I like to do is if you have a game idea, 
I always encourage people to start by trying to write your idea down, right? So the first thing that, that I suggest is try to write like a 30 second uh, game pitch or short description of your game. Um, so like I said, imagine that you have a potential player that's browsing through thousands of games on an app store, or someone asks you, well, what kind of game that are you working on? Um, you know, you want to be able to explain to them in a very short amount of time what your game project is and, you know, help them to, to decide whether or not it's something that's of interest to them. So, you know, I have a, a little sample here um, from, from the game that I'm working on, Brain Bouncer. Uh, you know, you can um, read that in this puzzle game, your goal is to hit yellow stars with a bouncy pinball. To do that, you must rearrange shapes and pieces on the board so that the ball will bounce off of them. There are also plenty of other obstacles and bonuses for the ball to hit and maybe avoid in some cases. It's a physics-based collision field challenge that tests your problem solving skills. Okay, so, so within that, that very short paragraph, you have an idea of what the game is and whether or not you might wanna play it, right? So think about if you have a game idea, uh, try to do that an exercise like that for your idea, okay? Then, uh, you know, once you want to, when, when you want to get into more detail about your game idea, um, I recommend that you write, start trying to write a concept document. Okay, so this is one or two pages, and it just goes into more detail about that. So there's some questions that I have that you can answer here. Um, there's also a link to a sample um, concept document for the game that I'm working on. Uh, so if you want to see how, how that might look, um, you know, you can do you know, you can do a, a, a little concept document of your own um, as a, a game idea if, if you're, if, if you have an idea that you want to start um, working on. Okay. So um, yeah. So, and, and then you can do, there's other more detailed documents that you can do. You know, I'll, I'll add more to this, but um, you know, this is a good place to start if um, you have been wondering how to get started on a game idea that you have. Okay. And if you're still not sure what to do, I have another um, bullet point list of steps that you can take. Um, you know, just go ahead and, and you can go through this. Um, there's like a, a, a link to some more detailed questions you can ask yourself about your game idea. Um, you know, so you've got that there. You can um, work through that. Um, one of the things I do is I do write game design documents for people as a service. So, you know, um, you know, those are just some of the questions that I ask people to help get them thinking about their games. Um, there's a, a demo game, a very basic demo game that I, I put together that I used to do in person with students. Um, but you know, with the pandemic, you know, we weren't able to do that. Very, very basic browser-based game um, that you can you can play. Um, and you can start reading about uh, some of the, the programming that goes into this. Um, and there's also an option to edit the game, right? So um, you can, um, you know, any, text area that has this blue um, bar before it, you can go in and edit. So I can do things like I can make the game speed faster um, or, you know, I can change this variable here. Um, let's see, let's change it back to like 1.5. And then if I uh, click try code changes, um, then you can see, okay, well, what difference did that, did that make to the game? Did this make it harder? Did it make it easier? Um, that sort of thing. Okay. Um, and other things that I have on this, are resources. So, um, you know, th this demo was made with the DC Public Library in mind, but, you know, th these books might be available, um, you know, in other libraries or maybe if you want to go on Amazon. Okay. So there's some resources that you can look at. Um, yeah. So just really uh, go through this. Um, you know, there's a, some questions you, that you can ask yourself um, if when you're playing games that you that you like, um, so you can start thinking about it from a game development perspective. Okay, so um, and then just you know some general resources and 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 things that you might want to to look into. And like I said, I'm going to be continuing to add to this, but this should help you get at least started. Okay, so um, I want to I'm going to open this up to to questions, and I'm also going to put in chat. Uh, some of the the links that um, we showed you here uh, in this talk. Okay, so I'm gonna let me go through the chat here. Um, okay, so okay, so I don't see any here in the ECGC chat, but I know that there's that uh, you know if there's any uh, questions on the YouTube live. Okay. Okay, 
yeah, no problem, no problem. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to um, put some links here in the in the chat. Um, so this document that I just mentioned that I was just showing you, um, I'm gonna put that in there first. So um, so you have this. Let's see, game uh, dev documents. Uh, let's see. So in progress. Okay, so you've got that. Uh, let me get you the link uh, to these slides here, this, this presentation. Um, and uh, again, like I think I, I think some of the the, the questions that we uh, that that we had yesterday, um, I was able to address them today. So that might also be part of why um, you know, maybe there's not um, as many uh, questions, right? Um, so uh, yeah, yeah. So so um, yeah, let me also give you the the um, my contact information. So um, I'll put that in chat. So you've got uh, my email. So I think that's the best uh, contact at uh, cloudy heaven games uh, dot com. So if you want Twitter, uh, there is also at a uh, uh, cloudy heaven uh, GMS. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Oh yeah. So it's not really, let me try this again. Cause I, I think when I put it in the, um, chat here, it's trying to do, do, to look for me as like a discord user. So I'm going to try to do this a little bit differently. So Twitter, uh, let's see, I'll do at, and I'll put, um, just a little, uh, space, um, after the at. Okay. Yeah. So that just know that you need to, to put the, uh, get rid of the, the space there. Okay. Um, and, uh, let's see. So I'm, the last thing I'm going to get here, I, I, um, is this slideshow presentation and, oh, uh, did, was the, was the, um, the, the YouTube, did that catch capture everything this time or do, do we need like a, a link to, okay. 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 Yeah. So here's the, uh, here's the, the slides, um, a, a copy of the slides. So you've got that. Um, and oh, this might be slightly different, but it's, um, you know, basically the same thing. And then um, if you want to, um, to look at this uh, video, a, a, another version of this talk that I did, um, you know, here's the a link to that. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in, in chat as well. So, um, and Okay, so you've got, I, I think that's really all of the, the major links that I wanted to share with you. So if you have any, if, if you do have more questions, uh, you know, just go ahead and I'll be checking back with this chat throughout the day. Um, I, I do have some, uh, some uh, uh, classes that I'm going to be teaching because I, I, I tutor. Um, I teach computer science and game programming, and I, I help high school students and whatnot. So I'm going to be doing that. So, but I'll be checking back. Um, if you do want, you know, tutoring, or you know, maybe you want to to discuss a specific question that you have, just email me, um, and uh, we can get in touch and, and figure out um, what we can do uh, to move forward. Okay. Um, all right then. If there's no other questions, then um, that's really all I have. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, thank you again. Um, thank you um, to everyone um, who, who joined in. And um, I hope everyone continues to enjoy this this conference and, and, you know, really start thinking about some of the things we talked about. And, you know, I'll do just one final plug here for, um, you know, really taking a look at the, the rest of this uh, Discord server here and, you know, start looking at some of the resources and, and making some of the connections if that's what you're you're looking for. 
Uh, you have a great opportunity here, so I would definitely take advantage of it, okay? All right, everyone, we'll have a great day. And, um, you know, uh, if you have any questions, I'll, I'll be looking for you, all right? Bye.